So first question which has been asked in interview is why an LB is required? Why F5 LTM? These are all production questions which are been asked in XYZ organization by one of my colleague. One colleague attended interview but he was not able to correct. Next interview he was able to correct. So after that I started this that I want to help my community so that they can clear n number of interviews. So first question which has been asked in interview is why a load balancer is required guys. What is one arm mode versus two arm mode. So this is the common 100% question which will be asked in every interview. So let's cover this. So guys first of all whenever you deploy f5 you need to understand the current architecture question is two question which he has faced is first why l5 is required so first let's say i have a client which is coming from internet then i have a firewall then i have f5 then i have let's say switch then i have server server one server 2 server 3 so question number one is why f5 or why a load balancer is required so guys my question cross question to someone is without f5 or without a load balancer what will happen what is the disadvantage when i don't have a load balancer coming into picture so guys let's say i have a client coming from internet then i have a firewall and then I have a direct server. I don't have. So this is picture one. And this is picture two. Where I don't have load balancer. So in that case what will happen guys. Let's say I have 100 users. Coming from internet. Connecting to firewall. Firewall will just forward the request to the server directly. In that case what will happen guys. Let's say if this server goes down. Okay. Let's examine that this server goes down. In that case, guys, my customer says that I have an application cnnets.com that to, needs to be 24 into 7 available. Because this is a critical website. I don't want this website to be down. So in that case, what will happen, guys? If this server goes down, is there any backup of this server, guys? So that is where we need one load balancer which can manage the load and which can transfer. Let's say if this server goes down, F5 will come to know that request should forward to this server or this server. So that is a first advantage of why an F5 or load balancer is required. Second case guys, let's say this server can only handle 70 requests at a time. But my customer has 100 users coming from internet. So this server will get overloaded, overutilized. CPU issue will happen, memory issues can come. So that is where load balancer main role come in. Load plus balancer. Load means customer request. Balancer means I want, let's say F5 request comes from here, from firewall to F5. F5 knows that some request he can transfer to this server some request he can transfer to server 2 some request he can forward to server 3 so that is where the concept comes load balancing algo so that are the two so see guys whenever interview ask you you don't need to go into detail like 10 minutes or 15 minutes so you need to be crips you need to have a proper one or two line answer if you modify something guys interviewer can ask something more so if customer ask you or if company ask you why lb is required so you just need to tell advantages so first advantage is availability 
my application is 24 into 7 available when I have load balancer coming into picture. Second thing is scalability. If one server goes down, load can be managed by second server. Third thing which happens is load managed. Both are same. Fourth thing is guys security. So in security, when I talk about there is a ESM module which has been covered. So don't worry. We will cover more questions on ESM. But today, mostly I will discuss F5 basics. It's a combination. So guys, F5 is a company like Cisco Juniper and people have confusion like what is LTM, GTM and ESM. So guys, LTM is a plain load balancer. I cannot say plain, but it's an application based load balancer. And guys, very, very important term. Why it is called LTM? What is the full form? You must know F5 load balancer, F5 load balancer. But if someone asks you, what is the full form of LTM? That is called local traffic manager. Very, very important, guys. Then there is a com term come GTM, global traffic manager. So people will ask you this question. What is the difference between LTM and GTM? And one more module is ASM that is called web application firewall. Very, very important guys. Now, so these are, I hope if Mohan or someone is there, I hope now you can answer this question why LB is required. If anyone has any other question, they can ask when I will take some Q and A at the end of the session. So don't worry, guys, please be stay on. Even you are in office or something. These are very critical sessions which we are delivering. It's free of cost. We are not taking anything. My some people were not able to crack interview. So we have taken this initiative. So that next time they should give us the good news that they are able to crack. I want that questions. Every question is different. So don't worry. Please stay with us. Now, guys, this question, guys, I will discuss in Q&A LTM versus GTM because I have many other questions to discuss. But guys, I will just say why this is term as local traffic manager means. You have an F5. You have a DC data center. You have a client coming from internet. Then you have servers, server one, server two, server three. Why this is called local traffic manager is because F5 is hosted also in same data center and your servers are hosted locally on same data center. But guys, sometimes customer will say, I want that this server is located in India and user is coming from India. It should go to India data center. Some requests are coming from US data center. It should go to US server. In that case, guys, your server should be located in different, different data center that is called global load balancer. That is called global traffic manager. It is also called DNS, guys. F5 has termed this as domain name intelligent DNS. Very, very important, guys. See, every term has some logic why it is called local. As an interviewer, I can also ask. See, company wants to understand whether you are working or not. They will not go much deep. But they will ask you some questions which they want to understand why either you know the concepts or not. So that is the difference between LTM versus GTM. And why LP is required. Next question, guys, which come to picture is difference between one arm mode versus two arm mode in F5, guys. Very common question, which you will see in many interviews. So, guys, let's see what is one arm mode, one is two arm mode. So, let me draw a topology. First, I will tell you two arm mode deployment. 
so these are called deployment modes in f5 so if someone will ask you guys production scenario they will ask you how you are deploying f5 are you deploying one arm mode or two arm mode so that is why you need to tell them so you need to understand what is one arm these are design deployment so let's go further on so guys when i say two arm mode that is meaning is i have a client i have a firewall i have a switch i have servers server 1 server 2 server 3 and this switch is layer 2 i'm just talking about layer 2 so in two arm mode guys what will happen is f5 will segregate your network one is front end network and another is back end so when i say two arm mode it means two interfaces of f5 simple meaning is two interfaces of f5 will be used one is this interface and one is this interface this will be your external interface which will be connected to external world and this will be your internal interface that is connected to internal architecture so that is what is the difference one arm versus two arm guys so in this case guys what will happen is very very important thing happen is they will ask you two arm mode two arm modes means two interfaces of f5 simple meaning is that two interfaces of f5 is required that's it now guys what will happen is so when i deploy let's say i am in deploying in vmware environment so i will use one network as external external network let's say i have external network 192.168.1.0 network another network is 10.2.2.0/24 it means two networks are used one is for server network one is for external that is why it is called two arm mode okay guys now if i come further on what is one one arm mode this is called two arm mode in most of the cases guys two arm mode is suggested why because it is segregated your external network is segregated from internal network are you getting me your external network is a segregation and internal network is on separate network so when i open f5 i will show you quickly so when i go here i will go to local traffic virtual server network interfaces so this is how you can examine whether you are using two arm mode or not So can you see this? You are having two interfaces. One is one dot one, and one is one dot three. So guys, F five interface is examined by this description: one dot one, one dot three. And how you can examine is two interfaces means then you will check your VLANs. You can see external and internal. That is what I told you, right? F five has one interface as external. one as internal can you see 1.3 is on internal 1.1 is on external and if i show you the ip architecture ip schema then you can see your external network has an ip 192.168.1.50 and your internal network is 10.2.2.50 that is the difference between an external network versus internal and that is called two arm mode deployment if someone ask you a picture to deploy you can deploy two client you can show them then you can say front end network firewall can become then f5 then you have switch which is called back end 
then you have servers server one server two server three depends on you so load balancer is coming into picture it's acting as a man in middle so that is called two arm mode architecture now guys what is one arm mode so guys one arm mode means you have a client just see the picture you have a client then you have an f5 here you have common interface common interface means common vlan or common network also you can say then you have servers server 1 server 2 server 3 guys so guys in this case what will happen is guys your traffic and your this interface you those this interface nothing is there only a single interface is used so again i will draw client client then this is common this is one f5 interface then we have servers so in this case guys only one interface of f5 will be used there is no separate network for external network and internal network only one interface will be used to connect both your client network and server network so that is called one arm mode in one arm mode means f5 is not acting as a middle device in this case your client and your servers are in common network because you will have only one interface of f5 guys what is the use case of this guys let me show you that so don't get confused between snat net or this one arm means only one interface of f5 is used common network only one vlan you can use two arm means two network two interface will be used simple differentiate between one arm and two arm mode so one arm mean means guys you have a client you have a firewall you have an f5 let's say your servers is here hosted and server gateway is firewall and this servers are hosted on cloud network please try to understand your servers and your client all are on internet your client is also coming from internet and your servers are hosted on also on internet so in that case what will happen is guys traffic will come from this interface it will go to f5 on this interface now guys f5 will check my server is it directly connected no because this server is hosted in internet so there is some routing i need so in that case guys f5 will have a default route towards firewall because server gateway is firewall in that case what will happen guys your incoming traffic will also go through this interface and your outgoing traffic also goes via this interface that is called one arm mode because to reach a clear picture is let's say you have client you have firewall you have f5 then you have server which is hosted on cloud aws or azure and server gateway is firewall now traffic will come this way it will come to f5 on your virtual ip virtual ip is nothing but a url of your website now f5 will check whether your server is hosted where either your servers are directly connected due to on self ip network which we have right we have two interfaces so either servers can be on this network if servers are on not on directly connected interface then we need a routing table on f5 
So now F5 will see, oh, servers are not directly connected. Then it will check. Let's say this server IP is 1.1.1. It will check to reach this IP. Do I have the route? So F5 has a routing table default route towards firewall. In F5, there is a routing to reach this server. F5 should transfer the packet to firewall. So this is called one interface. Incoming and outgoing is using only one interface. So that is called one ARM mode architecture. Live use case, guys. Right now, everyone is moving into cloud. So that is a live example on how you can integrate one ARM and two ARM mode. Now, guys, let's go further. I hope now no one will forget one arm mode and two arm mode. Now let's come into another question. I will open this questions. Very, very important live production question, which will be asked. What are all pre-checks you will do before VIP configuration? Question is guys, you have an F5 deployment in your company. You have already deployed your F5 in your organization. But requirement is from the customer is I need to create one application behind F5. My customer is saying that I have to deploy one application on F5. So what are the pre-checks which are required before you do VIP configuration? VIP is nothing guys. There are three terms. One is VIP, one is pool, and one is pool member. So whenever you deploy F5, guys, these are the three hearts. Important critical terms which you should know. So VIP is nothing but a URL of your website. Whenever you access like cnnets.com, google.com, that is called a URL and servers which you are deploying server one, server two, server three with port number, let's say 8443 that are called pool member. And the combination of this server is called your pool. So if I do a pictorial representation, so client traffic will always hit to your web. First traffic will always hit your VIP. VIP is nothing but your website URL. That is called front end traffic. And what is called, let's say I have server one, I have server two, I have server three. That are called your pool member. Pool member are nothing but a combination of server plus port number. So that is called pool member. Because F5 main role is to get load balance. Some traffic should go from this client to this. Let's say next client come in. That traffic should go to this server. Let's say next request come in. That request go to server two. Now what are the pre-checks? First pre-checks is guys, whenever you deploy new application or new VIP when you need to create on F5, First thing is you need to check whether DNS entry is there. Because every URL which I'm creating, let's say I'm creating one VIP 192, 168, 160, that should be associated with your domain name. How ISP, let's say I have a client, I have an ISP, then I have a firewall, then I have an F5. Then I have a server. How ISP will come to know that client is connecting to crnets.com, that traffic should go to F5. So there should be DNS entry. F5 LTM is not a DNS solution, guys. So there must be some external DNS, which needs to do a record on DNS. Let's say if crnets.com is one domain which I need to configure under F5. I need to give the IP. I just need to tell them that I'm using this IP. 
can you create a a record on dns very very important guys even when you troubleshoot guys let's say customer is saying that my url i am not able to access first thing is you need to check whether dns lookup is working or not that is the first pre checks before you configure a web now a second thing which you need to do is guys once a dns entry is done second step is you need to ask them about ssl certificates whether they want to host website on 443 or just a plain text so you need to ask them about ssl certificates if they want to host website on https guys in that case guys you need a certificate which will be given by your customer that is the second pre request which you need to ask third question guys which you need to ask is you have two connection one is client to f5 one is f5 to the server very very important thing which i am discussing now whether you want this connection to be on 443 and this connection to be on 443 or you want front end connection to be on 443 and this connection to be on 80 very very important question guys here comes the term ssl of loading many people knows this but do you know this what is the difference between ssl of loading versus ssl bridging very very important and third ssl pass through so this question guys if you forgot to ask then it will have a trouble so you need to ask because f5 guys very important thing when you deploy f5 f5 is deployed two are two two tcp connection will be done one from client to f5 one from f5 to the server there are two three way handshake will be done one is between tcp handshake between client to f5 one is this so you need to ask whether your front end network should be 443 and f5 to the server should be 80 in that case guys you don't need nothing you just need to create ssl of loading that is called ssl of loading which means only client to f5 will be encrypted your f5 to the server will be plain text very very important guys first dns query second thing you need to ask about ssl query whether they need end to end encryption end to end means client to f5 should be encrypted and f5 to the server should be encrypted if they say they need only client to f5 on 443 then you can only configure this connection to be on 443 so let me just show you quickly when i say client to f5 connection should be on 443 and your f5 to the server connection should be on 80 what does it mean guys so i will go to local traffic virtual server i will open this virtual server here you can see guys one is client ssl profile very very important guys every scenario will be covered by an example so don't worry in this way you will remember one is server see interviewer will know right if you answer this type of question with an example then interview comes to know that you are working professional people comes to me that hey sir i am working i don't i have a no knowledge but i am not working in this technology how i can answer guys trust me guys f5 gives you a free license you can practice n number of labs so client ssl profile means your client to f5 would be encrypted server ssl means f5 to the server will be encrypted so if only client to f5 should be encrypted that is called ssl offloading 
if they want client to f5 f5 to the server both encrypted then that is called ssl bridging another thing guys these are the three pre-checks you have done. You have gathered the requirement. Another thing is fourth question, whether they want TCP based load balancer or they want HTTP based load balancer. So guys, you can deploy F5 in layer four also. You can deploy F5 on layer seven also. So you need to understand whether they need any HTTP features, whether they need any compression or any layer seven modification. So that is where HTTP profile is needed guys. If someone says that if they want L7 load balancer, in that case, you need to call HTTP profile under web. So can you see this HTTP profile? So what is the role of profile mean guys? How F5 will come to know whether request is HTTP based or whether request is a simple TCP based. So that concept helps by profile. So whether they need a layer seven load balancer or just a normal load balancer. I hope that is clear. That thing you need to ask your interviewer very very important guys this question will be asked what is the difference between ssl offloading ssl profile so you need to answer this properly this is the pre request also guys now guys you have cleared fourth point now fifth point is guys how many application how many servers you need to deploy behind F5. Very, very important question, guys. Now we have done this client to F5 requirement is clear. Now behind F5, how many servers you need to do load balance? That is called pool member. Because to know pool member configuration, you should know how many servers are needed behind F5. So that is another pre-check. So how to create pool member guys. For that, you need to go to pools. Here I have two pools, pool member. So first you need to understand how many servers are needed. And second thing is guys with load balancing method they need to use whether they want a round robin. So guys, let's say client traffic comes. Let's say I have this client, this client, this client then i have an f5 then i have server one server two server three let's say this client comes this client comes this client comes now i want this client request should go to this server next request from this should go to this server third should go to this server so this is decided by load balancing method So that is called another requirement. You need to understand, right? Which load balancing algo they want and how many servers. And another important point is guys, your servers, let's say you have a server which have application hosted. Application hosted are on which port? Whether 80, 443, so port number is also required. So when you create any pool member guys, let's say I want to add one no, new server. So in that case, guys, you need to define IP and you need to also define port number, let's say 80. So you need to define that whenever you create any pool member. So that are the pre-requests, pre-checks which are required, I hope this will understand this will clear your this question which is asked so we have discussed why lb is required what is one arm versus two arm and third question is what are the pre-checks three questions we have discussed another question guys 
which always create a confusion. What is the difference between a self IP versus a floating IP? This question confuse everyone. What is difference? So anyone can just tell me on chat what is difference between self IP versus floating IP and I will just tell you by diagram. So guys, when I talk about self IP guys, have you heard about SVI switch in switch in router? There is a term called switch virtual interface or SVI. So guys, whenever you create a layer two VLAN, you should as you will have one layer three VLAN, which will use for routing different network. So I have created a VLAN. I have created one VLAN external one VLAN. I've created internal that should be associated with IP, right? So that is called a self IP in F5. Simple self IP is nothing but a layer three IP address assigned to a VLAN. So we create a VLAN, right? Let me show you. So when I go into network, we have created a VLAN. One is internal, one is external. But how to differentiate, right? What which IP VLAN segment, which network is in an external network. So my external network is 192.168.1.0 and my internal network is 10.2.2.0 slash 24. So where you define? So you go to self IP and you define. So that is called self IP is nothing but a layer three subnet or an IP assigned to simple another case guys let's say you have a client you have client and you have f5 then you have servers what should be the gateway of this server what should be the gateway of this server what should be the gateway of this server so gateway for this server these are internal server guys right and my internal server self ip is 10.2.2.50. So self IP has many cases. So self IP can be used as a gateway also for the server. First case. Second is for every VLAN, you need to create a separate self IP, separate network, a layer three. So that is the interface IP also, you can say. Self IP is nothing but an interface IP. It is the same way which is configured as HSRP VRRP also, which I will discuss floating IP concept. I will discuss. So each every server which you create, you will define a gateway, right? Let's say if server gateway is F5, then you need to define what is there. Even guys, another advantage of F5, I forgot to tell you, we have client, we have this client, then we have F5. Then we have three servers, server one, server two, server three. Let's say this server goes down. How F5 will come to know that traffic should not forward to this server. Traffic should forward either to this server or this server. In that case, guys, there is a concept comes health monitor. Health monitor examines that when server goes down, traffic should F5 should not forward traffic to down server. Because if traffic should send to this server, guys, you will face intermittent outage. Slowness issues will come. So self IP is also used for monitoring. So self IP is also used in monitoring F5. Which interface IP? Question will ask. F5 uses which interface IP to monitor server this, this, this. So you will say internal IP address. Now, guys, floating self IP. Floating self IP, guys, that will only come into picture when you have F5 deployment in HA. Let's say I have one F5 in active mode, one F5 in passive mode. Let's say I have a client, then I have servers, pool, server one, server two, server three. So at a time, guys, 
floating ip will be same are you getting let's uh, let's simply i will tell you let's say this server ip i have this server this server this server and this server is active this f5 is passive now let's say server gateway is this one 10.2.2.50 this ip let's say 10.2.51 because on both you will create one local self ip and one floating your local self ip is different on different boxes but floating self ip is common i am giving you an example let's say this server gateway is this this server gateway is this this server gateway is this now guys let's say this box goes down and failover happens all the traffic will go to this server in that case guys will you receive outage or not simple question i am asking because your server gateway is pointing to this f5 and this f5 goes down now traffic is going via this path high availability means if one device goes down traffic should be forwarded to another f5 in that case simple question is if your all server i'm just drawing a picture you have a client your f5 is deployed in ha you have one f5 here one f5 here then you have server 1 server 2 server 3 all gateways are pointing to this one now this box goes down will you receive outage or not guys even traffic is shifted to this but server gateways are still pointing to only f5 active device so that is where guys a floating self ip comes into picture whenever you are deploying active passive h environment so that common ip is used let's say common ip is 10.2.50 so it is same as a hsrp or vrrp so each and every self ip which you create you need to create a floating ip when you deploy f5 in ha mode so it will helpful when server gateway needs to point out to common ip right in that case nothing will happen if this goes down traffic will go here because server gateway is a floating ip so that is common so that is an example of floating versus a normal self ip so these are the things which we have discussed now guys another question which i have seen many cases which will be asked is what is content check monitor you will simple question will be asked content check monitor use case of this monitor in f5 so guys you don't need to tell you just need to tell the use case of this or what is content check so before that you should know what is monitor i hope everyone knows otherwise you i will tell you from where you can watch that in monitors guys there are different monitors comes first is address check another one is survey check monitor and there is one monitor which is called content check monitor so guys what is an advantage of content check monitor is guys in address check it will just check icmp request whether let's say i have f5 i have three servers server one server two server three it will just check the reachability whether this server is up this server is up this server is up in survey check it will do check whether your server let's say this is 10.2.30 10.2.2.31 10.2.2.32 port number are 80 80 80 so when i say survey check tcp is an example of survey check monitor so in that case guys reachability is also checked but it will also check whether 80 port is listening or not that is called guys service 
check monitor and TCP is an example of survey check monitor. Now guys, if some customer says that I want to also check the content. Server is up, that is fine. Port is also listening, but I want to check whether in this server index.html file is present content, whether that directory is present or not. So guys in content check, it will check your IP plus port connection plus it will check data also. Example is HTTP. So in that case, what will happen is once a TCP connection is built between F5 to the server, F5 will send one get request. So simple in content check is what will happen is I will give you, let's say you need to go to local traffic monitor tab. I will create one new monitor content check. I will go to HTTP monitor. I will say type HTTP. Now guys, these two things you need to give. Very, very important. Send string. So let's say I have F5. I have server. I need to check whether on this server index dot HTML file is present or not. So F5 will send get request. So HTTP works on which layer request and response header. So you will configure get, then you will configure index dot html and in receive string you should if there is a file then it should response you with 200 okay if you are not if this page is not there then your server will be down so how you can check is guys i have one server i will show you so i have one windows server i will log in into that here I will go into my computer local C XAMPP. So there is one htdocs file. So can you see this? I want to check whether this file is there or not. If this file is not there, then F5 will mark server as down. And what you are getting on this file that should be in your receive string let me open so i am getting this so what i will do is i will configure let's configure http string quickly i will get index.html and receive string i am doing five or let's say i'm not configuring five i'm configuring anything else four i will finish i will create one http monitor I've done it. See, when I'm accessing index.html, your response should be something like this is server five. If that pattern is not found, then server should be down. So let's create it. I will go to pool. I will create one pool of windows. I will here, I will select HTTP. I will select 10.2.2.35 port number. I need to check which port is it's listening. I will go here. So port is, these are the some ports. So let's say 80 is one port. HTTP add finish. So now pool of windows. Okay, guys, now what will I will do is in this case, pool of window, I have configured HTTP as a monitor. Now what I will do is see HTTP monitor, but guys, what will happen? Is it correct? Why it is up guys? I have not configured correctly but it's still up can someone tell me 
when I go to pool of windows, it is showing me up. But according to me, it should be down. Anyone, guys? This is an interview question live scenario, guys. I have configured in HTTP, guys. When I go to monitor, I have configured HTTP monitor receive string four. But when I go here on this page, I have this is server five. But here I have four. It should be down. But when I go into pool, pool of windows, this server is up. Anyone? Because I have configured wrong monitor. Here I should select HTTP monitor. Very, very important, guys. By default, I implemented a default monitor, which is wrong. I modified a new, I created a new one, right? I'm assigning a new one. Now let's see what will happen. It's checking, it's doing its interval check. It's checking whether you're getting, so see guys, it is down. Why? Now I will change. I will do some change on my HTTP monitor. I will change into five. Receive string means what you're getting from response page from index when you're accessing get. So when I access get, I'm getting this is index file, right? Server five. Now let's see what will happen. I will go to pool. See guys, this server is up. So that is where it checks your content. So that is why it is called content check monitor. 